Okay, so I'm going to go through drawing some new walls in, but you've got these existing walls that are at the moment just showing grey. So if you select any of those, you can go to Edit Type, and then you can see here the name is Sandstone 300 mil Wall, and here we can assume all of the sandstone walls are existing. And so because they're existing, you should show them and identify them differently on your floor plan to new work you're proposing. And the normal way you do that is by changing the, the colour, the fill colour, to black. So, so you just click on wall, right? Yeah, it's just selected the wall and then edit type. Yeah. So I'm just going to change that to black. Yeah, so edit type and then just the coarse scale fill colour. So remember before we went to edit the structure to change the material. And that, that's where we put the sandstone in, which is what you'll see from the outside and when you render and do all those different things. But this is just to change the view, uh, the display in the plan view. And, uh, and it's a really handy option that a lot of people skip over in Revit to set that coarse scale fill pattern and fill colour, which you just get... Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you can to do them all. Yeah, because they're all the same type. They're all the sandstone wall. And I'm going to go into the section. So I've just got one section at the moment. Uh, and I should show you how to make extra sections if you don't have that one in the right place or if you want more. So back in any floor plan. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You can go to the section tool on the quick access toolbar right at the top, you've got that section symbol. Or if you go onto the view tab, you'll see, if, if you don't see it there, there's a bigger section button on the view tab. It's just not in the right place. Yeah, so you've got a section, but it's too low. So that's only the section there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so when you click section, then you just need to draw a line after clicking section on uh, the part of the plan you want your section to be cut. So here I'm going to click above and then click down below. Don't worry about dimensions or anything that you have in the way, you can move them afterwards. And so now it'll have a section going, or a cross section. So do you know what this, this section that I had previously, what that would be called, if it's going long ways through the building? Oh, long a long section or a longitudinal section, exactly, yeah. And so this here is, is a proper cross section because it's going through the narrower part. And when you select that section on the line, clicking on the arrowhead doesn't do very much. But if you click onto the line, then you'll get the little uh, break mark in the middle. And you can use that to split the line just to make it Zero. graphically, yeah. A little bit better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, oh yeah. So, okay. So, with any section, you you should be able to find an arrow that flips the direction. So, a double arrow just next to it. Yeah. On the line. On the line. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that's standard with Revit. You make sections constantly because everything's 3D always when you're making it at first. Uh, and so it's difficult to see inside uh, even with a perspective view or a 3D view. So if you make sections as you go, especially at first when you're trying to get used to the way your heights are set and things like that, uh, it's really helpful because if I draw a wall now in plan, I can't really see the height of it. Yeah. You, you can after a while, you, you can know what the height is anyway without yeah. seeing the section, but at first it's good to do that. My um, spiral staircase is that I couldn't work out how to do the section to see it, so I got, I was looking through the window. <laughs> 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 What's going on in there? I think I can see the 
<laughs> yeah, now the great thing about Revit is you can make as many sections as you like, and it's no extra work. With AutoCAD, every time you do a new section, you've got to go and draw a new thing. But here, you just can make uh, you know, as many as you want. And uh, again, I'll make a section over to the right that maybe would face the other way. And uh, it's very little work to do that. And so that way, if I move it over to the right a bit more, I'll have something that shows the uh, that void space that is going to be cut. And I'm going to do some things with the walls there in a minute. But then just watch out for the depth of the section as well, especially if you move them. You might need to adjust the depth. So you can see there, it isn't going all the way through the building. And you can see this again when you click on the section line. There's a double arrow on the end of that dashed uh, box. So I'll open that section up. You'll see... So in, in the project browser, you can see there, I've got sections 1, 2 and 3. So the last one I made is section 3. And if I open that up, you can see it's showing the stairs, mm -hmm. but not the windows behind the stairs. Oh, it's cut off. Exactly. Oh. So at first, it will pick up the size of your building, and you won't need to adjust it usually if you're not moving it. But if you do move it or adjust it afterwards, you might need to change that depth. And so there you can see if I just take it to the left. Now, back in section three, I can see the windows. So, uh, anyway, so like I was saying, you can have as many sections as you want, and it's not a problem to make them just as, as working sections. You don't need to use all of them uh, as drawings in the end. So, yeah, of course, yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. If they're in the way, yep, get rid of them. Oh yeah, it gets always always they get added to that um, sections. It goes from the list, yeah, that's why it does, yeah, exactly, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, and so, oh yeah, so the reason I was showing you this section is because then we can start to look at the vertical elements. So we can see the wall heights there and also the other existing things like the floor. So this floor is, uh, is only 150 at the moment, but that might be okay to get started. And uh, so I'm going to select it and then go to edit type just like the wall. Yeah. And you can see then you'll get coarse scale fill pattern mm -hmm. for the floor, just like the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And you can, you see there, it's probably going to have black already as the colour, but we can't see the colour because it doesn't have a pattern. Oh. So you can of course set the colour just the way we did before, but it's done. The, pa the pattern, when you click on that field and then click on the little browse button at the end, yeah. is going to give you a list of all the hatches. And they're just like AutoCAD hatches. In fact, you can load all the AutoCAD hatches. So what the floor actually is, there a, is there a standard one? Oh, I'm just going to use solid fill because it's existing. So it's important that you don't show materials for, for things like existing floors and walls. Otherwise, people think you're building a new one. So if we showed a concrete pattern here, the builders would look at the drawings and assume they need to put a new concrete slab in and they'd come in and rip out the existing floor oh, wow. and they would do that. Um, whereas uh, it's, it's fine as it is and you can just uh, put the new floor lining on top of it probably if you're going to change it to timber or something and keep what's already there. So it changes the um, first floor? Exactly, so it's the same type. It's also got the same name, generic 150 mil. So, so it'll change. And then the roof also. So if we select the roof, you'll see if you go to edit type, it's got the same option. Exactly, so the colour's done as well, just like the floor, but we've got to set the pattern. Exactly. Okay. 
So that's a quick and dirty way of getting existing things to show black. If you're wondering, if you've done some or looked at um, some architectural drawings and seen that they they really do differentiate in um, a more um, rigorous way between existing and proposed, um, and uh, I can quickly show you some that I'm just starting on right now. Oh, that's right. Exactly. Yep. And uh, so. So here you can see I've got one that I've just started on for a client, and um, so there we've got existing and, and proposed as separate drawings. And you'll see after a while how you do that with Revit. So there, the existing walls are shown black, and then in the new proposal drawings they're shown um, black, but with the, the new work shown coloured, and also with the new work uh, showing the materials and other things for the walls. Yeah, yeah, just adding a bathroom, or changing the bathroom and the, and the pool, and then putting a new extension out the back. Um, so, uh, okay, so, yeah. The white on the right is yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's going to be above that level there, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's good. So it's a tiny project, but uh, still has to go through the whole process. Yeah, it definitely has to go. Yeah, so the councillor uh, is the usual, being uh, as uh, unhelpful as possible, but. Uh, that's, that's their job. So, um, so anyhow, it's good to think about uh, how you do that. And so, I've shown you a quick and uh, rough way of doing it, and it's it's fine at first to do it that way. But then, make sure you realise that you have in Revit this tool called Phases, and that's the way you'll do it in the end. So that way, you can set up these existing and new construction phases and have everything identified that way. Uh, so, anyhow, for a project this size, that method is, is fine, just making sure everything existing is shown black. And then the new work we want shown um, with, a, with a fill pattern. And that doesn't have to be a hatch or anything like that. For stud walls, it can just be left open. Can stud walls be, you know how it gives you the option of a 100mm wall and a 200mm wall? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, well, less even. Yeah, that's right, that's what I'm going to do now. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, 100 is quite generous. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they're normally not, not even uh, anywhere near that. Uh, 90 or 70 is, is, uh, is an option. It's hard to get the sound rating with 70, but you can if you, if you insulate them. Uh, but yeah, 90, it's, uh, it's simple. And then you can even go down, the minimum I've ever done is uh, 57 mil, uh, which is, is possible um, if you don't need uh, much uh, sound insulation. And, uh, and sometimes if it's just separating one part of a bedroom from another yeah. or something like that, that's fine. So for wardrobes or wardrobe built-in, yeah, that's why we're going around those walk-in wardrobes and things like that. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to have a lot of sound insulation, but you need a wall. And, uh, and in some cases you want to make it as narrow as possible, so your 57mm is, is possible. So could you show us how to change Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to click on the wall button, and then go to the list of existing walls, and you can see there that we have stud timber 90 and stud timber 70, which is standard for residential. Yeah. For commercial... You Okay, so this will come up as soon as you click on the wall tool. If you don't see the properties, make sure you've got the button there for properties turned on. So you'll see it once you click on the wall button that you have that button on the left. Yep. Yeah, you should be in a plan view. Yes, I'm just going to show you the list. I haven't chosen any yet. So, so just looking through the list there, you can see the walls that are preloaded. And you should be familiar with those. Can I have a yeah. If I, if I click on the internal wall, can I change it? Of course, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so they're all the basic walls you have loaded in this project. And so if I start with, say, stud timber 90. How do you see stud timber 90? So I'm just going to scroll up and down in that list. And. Have stud timber 17. Down, down at the bottom of the list there, I can see it above there. Above, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, okay, so those are walls made by the people who made the template. And they're okay, Stud Timber 90 is actually a pretty good default wall just to start drawing in new walls. But you might want a certain colour on the wall or a certain finish, and you also want that to show. So I'm going to go to Edit Type, and then. You yeah, so so you just while you're making the wall, that's right. And uh, so you don't click on Stud Timber 90, but we're not adjusting that. No, so you select it um, if you want to use that. As, yeah, select something. So you can you can start with any, but Stud Timber 90 is fine. And then Edit Type. And you'll get used to this. Whenever you draw a wall, this should be the process. Thinking about the type that you choose on the left first as your starting point, and then edit type if you want to make further changes. And then you'll see next to the name, you can also, if you still want to start with a different wall, change from the list there. You'll get the same list of walls, but you won't get the pictures of them in that list. And you can go to duplicate next to that to make a new kind of wall. So Stud Timber 90 uh, is, uh, is obviously being used already. So we can say Stud Timber 90 painted. And I'm going to have it uh, maybe red on, on one side. Yep, so you can do any colour you like. And I'm going to do uh, a different colour on each side. So I'm going to have it painted red and white. And so I'm going to click, click OK. And then you can see next to the structure parameter, you have the edit button, which is where you can go in and add the materials. So with that structure, structure, so that button you'll be using all the time, so make sure you are uh, aware of that. And uh, so again, next to structure, click edit, and then you can see we have... Is it structural or...? No, no, so back to edit type. And then you can see, no. yep, the edit button at the top there. Yep, next to structure. Yep. No, no, so you should just be, you shouldn't be there yet, so you should just be he here in the structure, so once you've clicked on edit next to structure, yep. it should have this panel. Yep. Yep. So you can see there we've got the, um, the one component that makes up this wall, which is a timber layer that's 90 mil. And if you click on the preview button down the bottom next to OK, you'll see that component. The preview button down the bottom next to OK. Yeah, I haven't. I've just yeah, I've just selected. I haven't even changed it yet. Yeah, oh, it's all recorded, so you can just go through the videos. And um, so you've got core boundary there, and um, those are not layers. They're a boundary between layers. So we've only got the one layer at the moment, and that's the timber. So I want this timber to be still, like this timber wall, timber frame wall, to still be 90mm thick. And I'm going to add 10mm thickness either side. So I'm going to change that thickness to 70. Which will mean that my timber frame is, is 70. And then I'm going to click on insert at the bottom to add a new layer. And you can see then it's come up as structure one, again, with material by category. We'll change that in a second. And then thickness zero. So as I was saying, we're going to change that thickness to 10 to make the, um, the plasterboard lining, basically. So most internal walls are just uh, timber or, or steel framed. And so then it's got, you can see a new layer at the top in the preview on the left. I'm going to change that uh, function to finish two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so if you've seen this list before, you might have noticed we've got finish one and finish two, which are both for finishers. So you just need to click on the arrow there, and you'll see the list of functions. So, so those two different finishes are for the interior and the exterior. So finish one is for exterior finishes, that's right, and finish two for interior. Yeah. So the others you probably don't need to use that much. Substrate you maybe won't do very often, but thermal air layer you might do, that's for cavities and things like that. And then the membrane layer again you probably won't use all that often. So for you it'll be And so then, now you can see it's still below the core boundary, so I'm going to click the up button to move it to the top, so it should be in next to number one after you do that, which means it's going to be on the exterior side of the wall. That's fine, just, just go to edit next to structure again, that'll take you back to it. So the edit button you click on, yep. No, you can't. It has to have that. So that core boundary... Yeah, it does. So, yeah, the core boundary is your structure. So... Yeah, the timber structure. Yeah, exactly. So you need to have a structure in your wall. That's right. That is, that's your core. And you've got to have something in between the core boundary. So if it's a, uh, a brick wall, it would be... If it's double brick, one of those brick layers would be the structural um, part of your wall, so you need to have that inside your core boundary. Um, and then you have the, um, the material, and uh, there you'll see it'll say by category, and you'll get a browse button when you click into that field, so the button with the three dots on it. Is browse exactly, that'll give you all the materials. Yeah, well, you may not have any of those materials that, that we want. So they scrolling down through the list there. Yeah, well, we want plasterboard, um, but we want it painted as well. So notice in the list there, we've got um, a lot of materials, but no plasterboard and no paint. So, yep, yeah, so that's fine. I'm going to go to um, down the bottom, and you have a couple of different ways of getting materials in. So there's the button at the top that brings up the library panel in here, which, well, there's lots of different ways. This is, this is just one way. So the top there, you can see next to where it's got probably Pro Materials All and an arrow, and then over to the right of that, there's a little uh, dialog box sort of button that brings up the library. So make sure that's turned on so you can see this extra panel at the bottom. And so that's your main library that has everything. Yeah, so you can toggle that on and off. And so the list that we'll be looking at are just the materials in the project. But the list down the bottom is everything. Exactly, so you can go to plaster and there you'll see if you find that, click on that folder and then find the, the plaster material over on the right you'll see there's a little uh, arrow that'll come up uh, when you go over it and you can click on that to add it to your project. Yep. Uh, you'll have glass already, but you can, you can add them. There's more different types of glass. You can just add them as you go. So we've always got that library available. So I've added plaster. Uh, remember, we want one of them, one side. Oh, I want one side to be uh, to be red. So make sure in the list at the top, then you can see the new plaster material. You can right click on it and choose yep, and choose rename. Yeah. So you rename that whole. Yeah. So I'm just going to make it plaster. 
red. It's really pl plaster painted red, but uh, so you could, if you want to give it the proper name, you could call it plasterboard painted red. But it's entirely up to you because no one else is going to see it. It's just something to help you remember what the material is. Well, not yet. We're still going to make it red. So then, a good um, process to follow is setting the appearance first. So it'll have the graphics tab open by default, but then next to that you'll see appearance, where you've got the um, the colour for rendering. And so this one is a um, it's a it's a stucco sort of plaster at first, and uh, and we don't want that. We want just a smooth colour. So there, when you see an image in the appearance, you can always clear it just by clicking on the arrow next to it and going to remove image. Yeah. So by doing that, we can then click on the color swatch and see which is uh, the one that says RGB 2092092. So that's red, green, and blue, all at the same value, which gives you a grey. So remember, red, green, and blues with computers, or in the real world as well, are, are the primary colours. Not red, yellow, blue, but uh, once you click on that, you'll see you don't even need to use those primary colours. You can just click on a area in the uh, colour field above. So you can see there I've got different colours coming up and the colour you get down in the new area is your selected colour. That yeah that's right and then you can adjust the brightness or the saturation with that slider. So you can also choose the basic colours as a starting point and then adjust them further by dragging either in that rainbow oh, so yeah, yeah. or on the slider. Yeah. And so it's a full colour wheel. You've got every colour possible there, unlike um, you know, when you're working with paint. Yeah, exactly. That's right. If you want accurate measurements, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because they're a standard and they translate to paint colours and to graphics um, pigments as well. So, uh, yeah, because a lot of the colours you can create on screen aren't reproducible by printing, uh, but Pantone colours uh, should be. So, uh, yeah, so if you click OK... You don't have to click that. No, 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 that's if, just if you want to save it for later, but we don't need to do that. So, yeah, just click OK, and now you'll see the colour come up on this preview of the wall. Well, because it is always an RGB. Re RGB is just red, green, blue. Doesn't matter. It's still, RG white is just RGB, a hundred percent of each. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the final thing, you probably want to turn the bump off as well, unless you want to see the, some texture in the plaster. Uh, down the bottom, you see there's a tick box for the bump, and you can just turn that off. So you just, just click yeah, in that field again and then the browse button. So that'll give you a, a texture when you render, if you leave it on. But you probably don't want that if you just want a new painted wall, you want it to be nice and smooth. So just uh, on appearance, yeah, and then you'll see it down the bottom, yeah. So we've set up the way it's going to render. So that's what appearance is for when you're doing rendering, which is going to be with the lighting and everything else. But now, if you go back to the graphics tab, you'll see it's still grey. But you have an option there to use render appearance at the very top. So just tick that box, and it'll bring the colour in from the appearance. Yeah. Yep. Hi, hi. Oh, yeah, sure. All right. So, uh, okay, so that way you don't have to do it twice. And that's why I normally recommend that you do appearance first and then go back to the graphics tab 
and just pick up the colour from the appearance by ticking that box. Just click into the material again and hit browse. So on the material name that you've you've just created. Yeah, that's right. And so you'll see the material name. Yeah, and just hit browse. Yeah. So that's it. So that material has been made. And I'm going to click OK now. And that side of the wall now is going to be red, the top side. So every wall has a top and a bottom, looking at it from above, from in plan. Yeah, the colour will be hard to see. Okay. Yeah, it will be hard to see it's a thin layer. And you don't really want to see it in plan anyway. So it's, and that's why we're just making it 10 mil, so it'll just read as a line in plan. Uh, well, that's what I'm going to do now. Yeah, that's right. So Exactly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click Insert again, and then click on the Down button to move it to the bottom. That's right. Yeah, all the way to the bottom, yeah. No, no, the one, the new one. So insert and then, then click down until it goes all the way. So notice you've got a label there for exterior side and then interior side at the top and the bottom of that list. So every wall has an exterior and an interior side, but this is an interior wall. So there's no exterior really. Right, yeah. So just need to remember that with exterior walls, uh, they're both interior sides. So we're calling this finished one, right? And that'll be finished too as well. Okay. Yeah, so normally if it was a wall that needed to have an outside, then we would make it finished one, but, uh, but no, I'll make it finished two. And finished two again? Yep. So finished two is always. Finished. Yeah, finished two is always finished. That's right, it is, it is, it is, yep. Should always be for interior. Yep, yep. And so then I'll make the thickness of this 10 mil as well. And then I'm going to uh, again click in that material field, click on the, um, the browse button that comes up next to by category or whatever material it is. And so now we've got a, um, a material chosen that's pretty close to what, what I want for my new material. So I want a plasterboard material again, but I want it painted a different colour. So I could go and make it again by choosing it in that libraries panel below, but another way is to just duplicate a material you already have, which is often less work, because you've done all the work to set it up already. So, so when you right click on that material name, you can choose duplicate. And so I'm going to give it a new name, uh, Plasterboard Painted White. And then go through the same process, but then there's one extra step before you change the colour. And this is the one that confuses people the most, I think, in Revit. When you go to the Appearance tab, you'll see it's got this name, Fine White. If you've used the same one as me. Yep, yep, yep. Now, I didn't bother changing that before because you, you really won't notice this material name. You don't need to worry about that. It's an extra thing that you have for the appearance. So the appearance is actually a separate thing to the main material. And uh, don't worry too much about it as long as you remember that when you see a number there, it's telling you the appearance of this material is being used by another material. And we know which one it is because we've just made it. So it's being used by plasterboard painted red. And if I change this colour, don't do this, but just so you can see why it's a problem, I'm going to change it to blue. Notice how plasterboard painted red also is blue. Right? Because they're linked. 
So that's where people, you see even people who've been using Revit for quite a while still make that mistake and just go and change the appearance without noting that it's being used by another material. So there's an easy way to avoid that happening. Right click on the appearance tab and choose duplicate there. So it's just remembering to duplicate twice. So you're duplicating the original material and then also duplicating the appearance. That's all you do, you just have to duplicate. That's it, that's it. And now I can change the colour of this to white. So I'm just going to make an off-white sort of colour. It'll do. Maybe a little bit more a bit more red. So now notice my red material is still red. And that's it, so I'm going to click OK. All I needed to change was the colour. When you look on the graphics tab you'll see if you left that use render appearance turned on that the colour there would have changed as well. That's it, OK. And I've got my new material on the bottom. Yep. And got one green line. Yeah, so just make sure you move that layer all the way down. So click on the down button. So select that layer that, that has the new material and then just click on down until it goes all the way to the bottom. Oh yeah, you may not it's yeah, only gonna be visible if you zoom right in. And you can zoom in and out in that preview as well to see. <coughs> yeah, so just, just make sure you choose the one you want. Uh, you've got to click on the preview button to bring it up. Yeah, oh, it, should, it should come up. It definitely will come up. You've got to be placing, I'm just placing a new wall. So rather than selecting an existing wall. Yeah, um, that's not a wall. Just go to draw a new wall in plan. You want, you want to be doing it in the plan view. And click on the cross up the top to get out of the mode you're in. Yeah, and just say yes. Yes there. So now you can go to edit type and you'll see it. Yep. No, so don't do that, just to go to edit type. In property, no, no, not edit type in properties. In property, no, no, in properties, the properties panel. Down and to the left. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to click OK, and now I can draw that wall. So if I click there, I'm just going to draw it alongside the stair. But you want to think about the height as well. So now that you have levels made, you can establish a height. And so I want this wall to go to the same height as the um, sandstone wall. So I'm going to choose TOW, top of wall, for the height. Yep. Yeah, they would, yeah. So 8 metres is the default height, which is pretty high. Yeah, yeah. And you can change them afterwards, yeah. so it's easy, yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to just draw alongside the stair. If I had chosen wall prior to us doing all that, then it would be Yep, so look, I'll, I'll, I'll come have a look at each one in a minute yeah, once I finish recording. So, okay, so I'll just bring this down and draw a wall there. And then I'm going to press escape a couple of times, which will cancel drawing everything. And just look at what I've done. So in the 3D views that I've made with a section box, you can then see I've got a wall that has red on one side, white on the other side. Oh, awesome. And so I just want to show you a few other options when you're drawing walls. So hopefully from that you can work out how to make your own wall types 
and that's something you do need to practice with if you're using the program. That's one of the more common things you do. Of course. Of course, of course. So you can select any wall and then just choose that new type from the list. And so if I go and make another wall, then I'll just draw over here a rough shape. That's if you want to draw in a rectangular shape, but I'm not doing that. No. Okay, so so normally you can just draw walls with single segments, but I wanted to show you as well, you can use different shapes. So you've got obviously the line segment selected initially, and you could draw a rectangle just by drawing the lines in that shape, but it's good to experiment with the other options you have. It's pretty intuitive when you click on, say, the arc tool, you can get an arc by clicking on the start and the end and then moving the cursor to set the curve. Oh, Jenny, did you just look at that wall before? The yeah. section box view. Oh, yeah. okay. So just the default 3D view. Uh, the one with 3D in brackets. Yeah. But you need to have the section box turned on. Oh, so double click on the view to open it. In 3D in brackets. This one? Yep. And then... There we go. So then you turn on section box to cut into it. So you've got those different options for the shapes of your walls. And uh, so it's good at first just to experiment with them and make sure you're aware of the possibilities. And so you can draw all those different shapes just by choosing them in the draw panel. And some of them i delete this and make it a... Well, actually, I'll just delete the whole thing and I'll do a rectangle. Some of them, like this one here, fill it arc. Instead of drawing an arc, like those earlier ones, let you select walls and then place an arc between them. Oh, there's which, whichever you need, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're all, they're all just different ways of getting an R. Yeah. And walls in, in Revit um, can't, well, you can't draw splines with the wall tool. So if you want a spline curve, so a more fluid curve, you need to use a different method to make your walls. But by default, uh, or just using the main wall tool, all you can make for curves is an arc shape which is actually a good thing. They, they've set it up like that deliberately because in real life you can't build curves that aren't based on an arc. Mm -hmm. A builder can't set it out. But you can combine arcs, like a small arc to a bigger arc. That's right, you can have as many arcs as you want. That's right, yeah. But you can't have a, a fluid curve the way people often draw them. Uh, it would be sort of... No, that's right. Because, I mean, how would a builder be able to measure that? It's mathematically virtually impossible without using a formula to do that. So you can make them. There are ways of modelling those forms in Revit, but not with the main wall tool. Uh, and so then remember as well, when you select those curves afterwards, you can easily change the radius if you want them all to be the same. And so think about the location line as well. So. So when you're drawing a wall, you've got the option for finish face interior and finish face exterior. So if I delete some of these walls here. Okay, so with finish face interior, if I click onto this corner there, you can see it's going to line up with the previous wall because the top in this case is the interior. But if I was to start on the bottom, it wouldn't line up because I'm drawing with the interior face and the bottom there is being considered the exterior, even though they're both interior, every wall member has an interior and an exterior face. So you have to think about that, but it doesn't really limit you in the way you draw because you can still draw from either side as long as you remember space flips the wall as you draw. So you can always press space if you want to draw from a certain side with an option 
that you've chosen. So if I choose finished face exterior, space bar, space bar yeah. So there you can see it's going the wrong way, but if I press space, I can flip it and it'll still connect properly after I join that wall. So just to finish off on walls, and you'll see, I'll quickly show you floors and, and ceilings as well. So now we've got some issues. Because <laughs> things are facing the wrong way. So yeah, that's right. So, yeah, it's the old uh, barbershop. But, uh, so that's, that's common with, uh, with Revit at first, when people just draw walls in um, without thinking about the, uh, the way they face. And uh, so... There you can see it was drawn with finished face interior. If I flip that, it's going to flip it based on that edge, on the interior face. So I've, I'll just show you what I did. So I've just selected the wall and then using space, you oh, can flip it after you've drawn it. Yep, so that's flipped it, but okay, notice yeah. how it doesn't line up anymore. You could, you could, but then it'll try and keep it joined and sometimes even that won't work because it'll keep the, try to keep them joined in the way they were joined. So there's a really good trick that I've worked out there. If you change the location line to wall center line, then when you press space, it's going to flip it over the center instead of flipping it over the inside or the outside. Oh, so it's wall center line. Yeah. So, so that can be really helpful when especially with interiors, you often just want to draw the walls in and both sides of the interior. So you don't really need to think very much about whether it's the exterior or the interior face that you're drawing with. That's right, yep. Yeah. And then flip them afterwards. As long as you remember that whether you've drawn it with finished face, interior or exterior, you can easily change it to wall center line afterwards so that the flipping line is in the middle and then space will flip it. So you obviously want the same sides to join to each other. And then here with my section box, I can bring that in. So just in the left, if you scroll down there in, the, in properties, uh, above that in properties, yep, just scroll down there and you'll see section box. Just gone past it, I think. Uh, so oh, oh, you need a floor plan, you need to be in a 3D view, so the 3D in brackets. Yep, double click on that and then scroll down you'll see there it is section box I can see it so just there yep that's it and then you'll see it come up here it'll just take a second but then uh, uh, did you just just uh, zoom a bit in the in the view should be there um, try zooming out yeah zoom out further oh that's a bit odd uh, oh, I just click to one side because you've got the, you've got the camera selected. Yes, yeah, click into empty space and now turn it on. Section box just there. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so it was giving you the properties for the camera instead of the view. Just select that box and then stretch it. So just click onto the arrows to stretch it. Yep, any of those. Oh, the arrows on the arrows. Yep, yep. That's it. Click and drag and move it into your building. So it's cutting it away. That's it. And then let go. Oh, that's it. Well, that's not going to do very much, but yeah, that, that's the way to do it there. And now if you orbit around, you'll see inside the building there. Yeah. So you can just drag it in from any side. Yep, yep. Um, yep, definitely. Yeah. That, but that's an easy thing to fix. So I'll just show you a couple of other things with the floors and ceilings. They work basically in the same way. So if I select that floor there and go to edit type, I'm not going to change this one very much um, at first, but if you wanted to change the materials or add a material, you'll see you've got the same option. Next to structure, you've got the edit button. When you click there, you've got the same system of layers and you can insert more to add in, say, a floorboard lining or anything like that. So I will do that afterwards. Okay, but that's what you want to do. You can't just say, I'm going to turn 
floorboards? Normally, yeah. Floorboards, you'd want to have a separate layer for those. Yeah. What about if you wanted to do like, a concrete floor? Uh, well, to do a concrete floor on the upper level, you'd have to remove the floor and, and add in a completely new floor. Um, because uh, if it's a concrete structure, it would have to have a, a thickness and, and it would basically replace the existing structure. Um, but if you just want a concrete look, there are finishes that you can add that, that do have that look that you can add over timber. Mm -hmm. So that, that's another option. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so different ways of doing it. And so then, as well as changing the material, I can change the shape of the floor. And if you've got a view like this where you can select the floor, that's helpful. You can also go to a section view where you can see the floor from the side. So in a section, you'll see it. And section view, I mean, those section box views are, are nice to look at and, and can be helpful, but the sections are actually more useful. And so then as long as you can see the floor from the side, you can select it and then click edit boundary to change the shape. And so when you do that, if you're in a section view, it'll ask you to go to a different view. Because remember, we drew the boundary from above in the plan. And so we can't see that in a section view. And so that's normal. When you see this message, don't, don't worry. It's, it's, it's uh, the way it should be. And so there I'm going to choose floor plan level one. and then open view. Which will give you the outline of the floor in that level one floor plan. And so what I want to do there is add in a void area, which is actually there in reality, uh, above that, um, the entrance basically. So again, notice you've got the same drawing options as you do for walls, basically. Uh, so we've been using things like pick walls to make the edges of the floor so far. But you can always draw any shape you like using line, arc, and the other options that you have there. And so I'm just going to use line, the first option that you have in the draw panel. And then I'm going to snap to the edge of the floor there in the middle of that wall. and come across to the left. And then down. Back across to the right. And escape twice to finish drawing. So that's the void area I want. But remember you've got to join that to the edge of the floor. Same as we've done a few times, you can use split element in the modify panel, that the first of the little buttons there where you've got array and everything else. So with split element you can break this line on the right, just somewhere in the middle, and then use trim to corner to join the top and the bottom. Exactly, exactly, that's right. So that's it. Once you've got, gotten used to that, you can do any cutouts you need in your floor edge. I think I've, I think I've done that yeah, that's fine. Yep. And uh, then if you want a void that's inside that area, you'll just use a, sh a closed shape like a rectangle. So I'll just do one for the sake of it over here. And that'll also make a hole in the floor. Tick to finish. And again, I'll just have a look in the 3D view to see what it's done. Yep. While I'm at it, I'll fix this. So, so you're, oh yes, I'm recording all of it. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, so I'm going to maybe just, while I'm at it, fix that uh, wall there. I want this to be white on the outside. I want the red to be on the inside. So to select that group of walls, I'm going to press Tab after I go over the edge of one of them. And that will give me a chain of walls. So that will select that whole loop. And that way I can change them all together to wall centre line and then space and uh, flip them. It's just a little thing, but as you're using the program more, you can try those different option keys. So tab on this circular wall here again will give me both sides because it's two curved walls, two uh, semicircles. But if I go onto the edge and press tab, it will give me that connected loop. Or here again, tab. Oh, because I've got red on the inside. Okay, so then those walls are going through both levels. So the final thing, before maybe I might just quickly show you a little bit about ceilings, but um, the uh, the walls there, well, you might want some other walls that are only on the lower level. So say if I want a uh, bathroom over here or something like that, using the wall tool, I'm going to set the height. So I'm just, all I've done is click on the wall button there. I'm going to set the height to level 1. So... Have I selected any of my upper level walls yet? Oh no. No. Yeah, yeah. So just, I'm just in the... Oh yeah, so that you'll need to have a... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you'll need to attach them to something. So I'll, I'll show that as well. You turn them off? Okay, so if you go to your view panel, and then under user interface, then you can tick anything that you need. No, no, so user interface, yeah. tick project browser and properties, and just try not to click on the cross for those. Okay, so... So tab will select all the walls maybe? Yeah, if they're connected. Yeah. So just hover over the wall, then press tab. T press tab first, then click. Tab, then click. There we go. That's it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So here, when I go to draw the wall on this lower level, I'm going to set the height to level 1, and then... Oh, uh, when you draw the in properties, you'll see it'll have top constraint, not height. And it's on unconnected, and then just change it there. Yeah. yeah, leave that, yeah, yeah. So it should stay, you won't be able to change it. Yeah. So, um, okay, so I'm just going to draw some walls here, which would be for a little bathroom there. And so it, of course, would only be on the lower level. And if I go and look at the 3D view, you can see that it is. Of course, I've put it right where the void is, so maybe I'll <laughs> flip that to the other side. That's an easy thing to show you. So, okay, so I want that to go maybe onto this side. Or oh, such a tight space, this one. I never know where to put anything. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, I'll flip it. So with uh, mirror draw axis, I've selected the three walls, then mirror draw axis, and I'm going to turn copy off, and then just use the midpoint of the wall at the end on the left, and bring it across, and that will flip it. And then I can just move it to one side of the window. You turn copy off, so you have to Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's all you need to do to make the walls only on one level, but then notice they will come through the floor. Yeah, because they're set to go to that level, and that level stops at the top of the floor. So, to make them stop below the floor, this is probably easiest in a 3D view like this. You can select them. Yep. And then... Yeah, yeah. 
and then you'll see you should get the option to attach top base. On top of the scale? Oh, up on the room, up, on, up the top, top right. Yep, so attach top base, click that, and then you can select the floor just by clicking onto the edge of the floor. You've got to find an edge somewhere. It'll highlight the floor. So you select the bottom of the floor? Yep. And that'll stop the walls at that floor. Yep. So that's a good way to build walls because walls should generally go through to the floor structure of the level above. But then ceilings are always a tricky one because ceilings <coughs> usually sit within walls, <coughs> but not always. Uh, so for this part, I've got these enclosed areas. I might get rid of the uh, some of these extra ones. <coughs> Sorry, and uh, so I'm just going to move some of these walls around a little bit just to make the planning maybe start to be something that I can work with. So here I'm just selecting the walls and nudging using the arrows on the keyboard. Which, when you're playing around with design ideas, is a really useful way of just shuffling things around to get the rough sizes that you want. And so, there again, I could maybe fill up those corners in the same way as the others and I'm starting to get towards a workable plan layout. And then, once you have the walls and the floors starting to come together, so here you can see it's done that, that thing again, and I'd have to, again, wall set line, flip it, and attach just like the other walls to the floor. Then you might think about putting ceilings inside those areas. So we have the, um, the main ceiling, which you'll have to draw separately, and that we'll look at later. But in those enclosed areas, you can easily put a ceiling in without doing very much. So you'll have ceiling plans, as well as floor plans. And so if you open up a ceiling plan, it looked very similar to a floor plan, and a common mistake people make is opening a ceiling plan by mistake and drawing away thinking they're in a floor plan. Which, at first, you won't even notice because it does work very similar to a floor plan. But remember, it's a reflected ceiling plan, so it's looking up and not down. And, uh, and once you get used to that, you realise you can work easily with things like ceilings. So here, I've got those rooms. And now I'm going to click on the ceiling button. And then you'll see with the default option, automatic ceiling, you can just click inside an enclosed space. Here, I could actually get that area and it's going to work pretty well, but uh, I don't want that. So I'm just going to click inside the rooms for now. So there, one, two. Now, that worked, but it's hard to see. So I'll undo, just to show you if I go and make a ceiling again with one of the ceiling grid patterns. So I'll go 600 by 600 mil grid. And they're not very useful for residential, but I just want to show you one that's more clearly visible. So there you can see when I click that the ceiling pattern makes it easy to see. But when you're making your own ceilings, especially for residential, you probably want the compound uh, plane ceiling. It just comes up as a yeah. yeah. Uh, it, oh, it's got a default thickness, I think 57 yeah. or something. So when it's highlighted, when, you, when you're bothering over it, you've got the default. Yeah, that means it'll make that shape when so you click. So yeah, and it's probably giving you a warning because you've done it already. So, so you've added in a few ceilings every time you click. It'll add in a new one. Yeah, and that's what you have to watch out for because they're hard to see. If you make a section, so make a section through that. Yeah.
Okay, so I've just done that. I've clicked again into the same area and it's given me a warning now telling me there are identical instances in the same place. In other words, two ceilings over the top of each other. I'll undo that last one. And to see it, because it's plain, it's difficult to see in this, even in this ceiling plan. So I'm going to move the section that I have just near it to the right a little bit and then go into my into that uh, browser to see the section Let's make sure I've got the, uh, the right one, there it is so then I can see the ceiling below the floor and it's important, especially when doing interiors to think of ceilings as a separate element to your floor yeah so yeah, so that, it's common these days just to line the bottom of your floor structure and make that your ceiling which is, it's always possible but, but strictly speaking you should have a separate ceiling element and traditionally you would have had a separate ceiling structure which is a separate element to the floor and it's done that way for a reason it's not just uh, for the sake of having an extra structure it's so that you can put in things like lighting ducting, pipes, all those things that's right that you need between your floors Oh, it varies, uh, but uh, for lights, how about, how much is that? 100 mil or so. How much is the oh, I don't know. Uh, that'd be about 120 mil, I'd say. Oh, nearly 200 mil, 190 something. Right. Yeah, so that's a good way. So that way we've got the yeah. That's right. You can drag it down, or you can just select it. You can, move it up. You can yeah. You could move it up to touch, but you want to maybe be careful with that as well because if you don't allow enough room for your lights then the lights will go into your floor and they won't work properly so you do need to allow um, at least 100 mil below your floor for the lights just with effort anyway and so a good way of setting your ceiling height if you can see it in your section you can select it there and then in properties you can type in height offset from level so 2600 is okay 2700 is better and that has lifted it up a little bit but I've still got a gap between my ceiling and my floor which will allow enough space for the lights and once you've got the ceiling set up properly lights are really easy but if the ceilings aren't set up lights are hard so you don't need to go very far with lighting just yet but if you do have lights that you want to load they're mostly ceiling lights in the library so I've just gone to the internal folder I'm going to do a lot more on lighting later so you don't have to do this now but if you want to see a down light that's recessed uh, yeah I'll get that one for now so notice I can't put it in here because there's no ceiling exactly but I can put it in that room where the ceiling is and then in my section view you can see the light there, it does actually go a little bit into the floor but the light fitting itself is about there, I know, with this one, so it would, it would make it so that's it, once you, and, and I should have shown you as well, with ceilings again they work just like walls and floors, so when you click on edit type you'll see it's got the same setup with the preview there, with the different layers and if you click edit next to structure, if you can make a wall you can make a ceiling because you can insert layers in the same way move them up and down and set materials once you've given them a thickness and uh, so again it all builds on the same same basic approach you have with walls and uh, so that's really all I wanted to show you with those things and then we'll have a look at um, some loadable families next so windows and uh, loadable families so windows, sorry, walls, floors and ceilings are, are, are called system families and they're not loadable and so what that means is if you click on the wall tool or floor or ceiling you'll notice there's no load family option so you don't load them in from the library the same way you do windows and doors and furniture so this red and white wall that you've created yep. that's not saved? No yeah, yeah. there are ways of getting them from one file to another 
but you do it in a different way to the other families. So, and then it does make sense after a while, you'll see there's a, there's a logic to it. And so then loadable families are the ones we're going to look at next. Doors, windows, and furniture, mainly. And you'll see with those, you've always got the option to load family. That will take you to the library where you have all these different categories. They're all loadable families that you can easily bring into your projects. So I'll do that next. I'll give you some time. 